Don't be fooled by the familiar styling. This Audi Q5 is all new. It's a second generation car and it follows on from the first, which found 1.6 million homes around the world since it went on sale in 2008. Now this new one ticks all the usual new car boxes of being lighter, more efficient, having a plush new interior. And it's also built in Mexico, which is where we've come to test it for the first time. Now in the UK, uh, we're going to get the two litre four cylinder diesel engine and a two litre four cylinder petrol engine and a three litre V6 diesel. Uh, some cars around the world will get front wheel drive and manual gearboxes, but in the UK, they are quattro, all wheel drive and automatic only. Now the V6 diesel is a permanent quattro all wheel drive and has an eight speed torque converter automatic connected to it. Uh, the engine has lots of torque, some 620 newton meters, and it's an incredibly smooth and refined engine. In fact, that's probably the, one of the high points of the Q5 as a whole, just how relaxed uh, and quiet it is to drive. Uh, we've also had a go in the uh, two-liter Forsen the petrol model, and that was a very nice engine as well. Uh, you have to rev it to get the power, but once you're there, it's willing to be revved as well. Uh, there's a nice spread of torque and that's probably all the Q5 most people are going to need. So Audi offers uh, several different suspension settings on the Q5. Uh, we're trying cars here in Mexico with the air springs and adaptive dampers and the ride comfort is excellent. It's a very comfortable car uh, and you can play around with all the different settings. There's seven in total and 60 millimeters of uh, adjustability in the suspension. The highest is reserved for off-road and we had a bit of off-road driving and there the Q5 did all it needed to. Uh, Audi sells this car around the world and are in many of the markets, in Russia, Eastern Europe, parts of the Americas, those are the sort of gravel tracks that uh, buyers encounter and it, was, it performed well. Their steering is electric steering, uh, there is a variable ratio one coming but it's a normal one for now. It's not the most communicative steering, you know, it, it does everything you want it to, but we'd really want some more feel in the interaction from that. The handling is not what you'd call involving, it's not a fun car, but it is a very safe, uh, competent car. Uh, there's torque vectoring as standard, which keeps the nose tucked in going around corners, and it's pretty resistant to understeer as well. In time, the V6 diesel will be offered with a sports differential and now the engineers claim that with this, you might even be able to get the car to oversteer. Now, one of the real high points of this Q5 is the interior. Uh, it's largely borrowed from the A4, A5 and Q7 models and it's simply of a quality none of the rivals can match. Uh, there is the Audi virtual cockpit Q5 also gets uh, Audi's latest MMI infotainment uh, screen. Uh, it's not a touch screen, which I personally prefer. I find touch screens not the safest things as you have to take your eyes off the road constantly and hover over with your finger. Uh, instead, you get a combination of a rotary wheel and a little touchpad and simply put, it's one of the best systems out there. Styling wise, uh, you're probably hard pressed to pick this Q5 out from the old one but the success of the old Q5 meant that Audi's got a formula that's pretty successful and uh, it doesn't want to do anything drastically different to alienate such a large audience. Now would you buy an Audi Q5? Well, for most people, they probably would. They're going to like the way it looks, it's composed, it's quiet, it's smooth, it's economical, but we would prefer a bit more handling verve, a bit more involvement in the way it drives. The likes of the Jaguar F-Pace and Porsche Macan have shown that can be done, which for us means that it doesn't go to the top of the class.